Hi everyone, we're in the now. I'm Penny Khan and I'm Policy Official from Cabinet Office. Uh, Miles, I'm Software Developer Babylon. And I'm Nigel, Software Engineer at Nielsen. So our project's all about making sure Sandra's always in the now. You <laughs> might be wondering, who's Sandra? Well, Sandra's the lead nurse trainer for the intensive care unit at Finley Park Hospital. And she leads a fantastic team doing really critical work for the most um, urgently in need of care patients. And one of the things that she spends a lot of her time doing is managing countless spreadsheets and databases, making sure that her team are trained to use the life saving equipment that they use. So we want to help her with that problem and we want to save her time so she can spend um, most of the time doing one of the most important things that brought into the NHS saving lives. So I'll now hand over. Uh, so as part of our discovery phase, we identified three main things that we need to focus on. Uh, so one is being able to tell that all members of staff have got required training uh, for particular <coughs> equipment. Uh, that's uh, every day and also especially when CQC is going to call it. Um, beyond that, we also want to know very quickly if a new piece of equipment is, is uh, installed in the hospital, a new version comes out, we want to know immediately if you need to retrain it. Uh, and finally, in order to orchestrate that, you kind of need to have a, a role for different people in the hospital so that as soon as that role changes, uh, you immediately know all the people that need to have uh, new training. Uh, development, yeah, so we made front end, a back end database, uh, created some late data, iterated on that, so we kind of now have working mm -hmm. products. Right, so we picked the prototype, which hopefully you're going to see in a second, um, and <coughs> a video of it. Um, so we've got staff data, you know, members of staff, uh, the basic names, their, their grade, uh, what ward they're on. Uh, we've got equipment, obviously, various pieces of equipment they might be using in the ward. Uh, the role, we've only got one role at the moment, that's very key as well. And then the training, what training they've had on given dates. Uh, so we can tell them when the training expires. Thank you. Uh, and important data, we've got a graph at the top, basically, when you do searches, to take a search on the name to work out whether their members have been trained on that. Uh, piece of equipment, uh, or whether they're fully trained for their role that they have, uh, for what they need for that role. So Farina, Farina has got her, all the training she needs for her role. You can do it by, uh, by ward and work out how many of your staff on that ward are trained for the equipment they need to be able to use. Um, and eventually then we'll move on to the equipment. So you get your way around as well to say, okay, we've got this piece of equipment, how many of our staff are, are trained for that, 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 that equipment? Um, so that's what we did over the few days. Uh, future prospects, we'll get to it in a second. We looked at uh, career options, staff retention in terms of can we keep staff longer by, by making sure they've got training. Uh, we looked at things uh, like the um, inventory management as well in terms of how the NHS uses equipment when it's serviced, the training for servicing the well. <laughs> So, so somebody's actually my wife. Um, <laughs> we did talk about that. Um, the, that system is, isn't particularly open to change. It would take budget and money and time for her as a nurse to go and say, we need some money to update that system just for my, just for my unit. Um, so it's not a practical uh, financial solution to, to do that, unfortunately. It's not built to be adaptable. Um, the, also, the idea of like how we define the data behind the scenes is that it could be imported into that in the future. Uh, just this is a stepping stone. Thank you. Are there, yes, question for you. Um, I spoke about this team, they need to share the medical devices needed by trust. And this is a great problem we had trust why. And to expand this beyond the intensive care would be the ultimate goal to make it valid for the entire hospital, such that new devices being brought in by the EDE service would instantly be populated and allow the training needs to be recognised as soon as that device appeared. And so there was no device that was left untrained. But this requires more than just nurses, it requires almost every level of medical or private input. So doctors at different levels have different training requirements for different units, have different competencies. And um, you know, as much as people think doctors know what they're doing with their patients. 
trust that they don't. They pretend they do, or they assume they do, and they rarely actually demonstrate they have. And there's a scary prospect when you actually sort of pin them down and say, where is your training? And um, you know, the problem then is generated is how do you stop people using their equipment if they're not going to use it? And part of it is look at the FIR data uh, data sets so you can actually define public sets of how you structure data. So it's something that the NHS could use and it also means that different trusts could use the same same um, data structures but have their own systems but still have them be interoperable as well which would be a key a key to the NHS as a whole and we all we'll be able to set that up. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.